Oh yeah, it's been a bit of a late one. Wearing a um, hair torch because I've been looking up at the ceiling quite a lot today. Trying to get the screws in. It's getting a bit late now. Uh, it's about nine o'clock now. Uh, we really need to stop. But uh, we've got the ceiling in now. If you check it out. Check it out. <laughs> I'm happy, loss. man. Loss. Yeah, that's been a killer mission. We need to uh, give it a bit of uh, TLC um, on here. Um, other than that, it's okay. A couple of little touch-ups and things. But uh, we have a ceiling, which means we have lights. Mm. And uh, not only lights, we have dun -dun -dun, dimmable lights. Cinema mode. Reading mode. Please stand on the, the max fan, honey. Oh. Come on. <laughs> We're just prepping to um, put expanding foam in onto these tiny holes in the ceiling. So what we're doing is we're just sealing this beam to stop the expanding foam from coming out and dribbling everywhere. Um, we're using the insulating um, sound uh, acoustic deadening foam that you can buy. We bought from B and Q's. Surprisingly, the uh, carpet tape that we used, which is surprisingly this carpet tape we used, the stuff from B and M was the best we found. Um, this one's not as good as the one that we had from B&M. Simply because one from B&M you can tear with your hands and it's equally as sticky so that's easy to work with. Um, this you need a pair of scissors. This is cheaper though. This, yeah, but still the B&M stuff was better I find for what we needed. Um, and yeah, we've uh, driven, what, 30 miles uh, to Ikea? and uh, it all stayed up before we finished the roof. I was expecting it all to be on the floor before we got back and not one piece of roof fell down. So carpet tape is the way to go. Get the board up there and that way you don't, you can, uh, it's not going to fall on your head because we were worried about uh, doing this. We thought it's going to be really hard and really awkward but it's been fairly okay. I quite like this lining, you see, this is not too, too big mm. so easy. And I can still tiptoe a bit. Yeah, you are oh, six, and six I'm inch. quite a tall fella. Yeah. It's still yeah. quite nice. Yep. Uh -uh. As you can see, we use 9mm plywood on the metal battens to create our battens to screw the ceiling to. The main reason for this was screwing into the metal was just really difficult. Just uh, completed the roof installation. We took it down because we put wires behind it and put it back up again. We, we basically, we, we completed a bit too quickly and we didn't think it through. So we put battens in and wood on the top now. And live and learn that uh, it's all looking a bit better now. Yeah, the insulation is done now. The, uh, yeah, the insulation's back up again. It's looking a bit bitty because we, uh, we used the old insulation rather than buying new again. Um, and yeah, all good. Yeah, time to put the board now, apply it back. The board back up and, uh, and then start with... make it look pretty again. This board is two and a half to three millimeters. Uh, we bought this to about one pound fifty on, um, ability shop. out of our ability hardware shop. I thought that the whole thing was going to spin like that. Uh, I didn't know it spun in the middle and it's absolutely epic because it just means you can get some awkward places like this with a drill which we couldn't before and we can really kind of get in there with a the drill it's awesome wish I knew about this one was under the van I would have bought 10 of them so the ceiling consists of some dodo mat for sound deadening followed by the 25 mil insulation board followed by the 2.5 millimeter plywood and between plywood and the insulation board we have a layer of the oil as well so this is our monster <coughs> this is the other monster which is just staining the um slats for the uh, roof We've uh, decided just to go with uh, tongue and groove slats because uh, 
it's going to be cheaper and it's also going to be easier that we're going to hide the uh, plywood behind and they're nice and thin to give us plenty of headroom and then we're going to put down a very very thin wood floor as well but we're just doing a mahogany colour this is the first coat going on um, the weather again is abysmal as always we're going to go for a, a matching mahogany workshop and then a light coloured um, cabinets to uh, break it up a bit it's going to look beautiful <laughs> After applying a couple of uh, layers of varnish, we uh, decided to sand it back in a uh, very patchy manner and then we reapplied another layer of varnish. This gave it a more of a patchy look rather than a solid colour. We then put on top of that a yacht varnish to give it a clear gloss so there's a bit of a shine to the ceiling. The whole process did take us quite some time but um, it really was worth it. The tongue and groove was then fitted using a fitting kit which is a small bracket that sits within the groove and fastens from the back. So um, I've uh, managed to cut through on the wrong side of this and waste an entire board which I'm really annoyed about. I would say I'm not sure how I did it but uh, I know it's because my wife measured it wrong of course and uh, now I just have to live with the consequences, I'm afraid. Oh yeah? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> Where was I? When did I measure it? Oh, bloody, can't get the staff. <laughs> <laughs> She's in these uh, cladding clips. Wish I knew the first time about these. They just slide into the back of the board. And then they uh, quite simply nail in we're using screws because we can't really land into that surface and they hold up wood like that in order to keep the ceiling uh, neat we had to run the wires for the max fan and the lights behind the ceiling panels so they're as easy to get to as possible without um, being visible this was a little bit of a pain and we had to be very careful not to go through them because we did the first time we put the ceiling up. We then cut holes in the uh, places where the uh, lights would go into which gave us enough room to push the wires back into the uh, holes themselves behind the boards because the wires were connected using um, connectors for the two wires and it's those connectors that uh, ended up taking too much room behind the light fitting itself. It's a very tricky um, job and we did find that the uh, connectors themselves were problematic and we found that the solder type where you just join the cables and you melt the solder in the middle with a heat gun was by far the best. When uh, wiring up the electrics for temporary use, please do not forget to use a fuse. That is most vital. Also, please don't forget to like and subscribe to our videos. That is also vital because you'll miss all of our fun and adventures. Thank you for watching.